brewery in Westminster, Massachusetts produces thousands of gallons of beer per year. Most of the people who consume these beverages, however, don't know what goes into what they are drinking. In this video, we will walk through the process by which Wachusett Brewery turns raw materials into their cold, delicious beers. These ingredients, namely barley, hops, yeast, and water, go through a meticulous process before they become the beer everyone is familiar with. Barley is broken down from a complex carbohydrate into simple sugars. Next, hops are added, which provide the desired flavor and characteristics. Finally, yeast is used to ferment the aroma concoction into an alcoholic drink that everyone is familiar with. I got the, the boys and girls from WPI here. Oh, okay. So, all these specialty grains, once they're milled, they're, the, they're are what's going to influence the color, the character, and the style of beer. Darker grains make darker beer, lighter grains and wheat make lighter beers. Once in the mash tun, the grains and malt are showered in hot water. Wachusett's mash tuns shower their grains in 170 degree water at a 3 to 1 ratio of water to grains to create their signature beers. Mashing, as the process is called, breaks the starches into sugars and can manipulate the flavor of the beer. Want a sweeter beer? Mash at a higher temperature. After one hour, all that starch is converted to sugar, and it's the sugar that the yeast needs to metabolize. After the grains are mashed, the residual grains and sugary liquid, called wort, are transferred to a lauder tun. Here, the grain undergoes a process called sparging, where the grain is again showered to reach a target volume. In the lauder tun, the wort is also separated from the grains. The wort goes into the brew kettle and the grains are disposed of, often trucked to local dairy farms. The wort enters the brew kettle to be boiled with the hops. This is where most beers gain their personality. Hopping allows a brewer to choose the flavor, aroma, and bitterness of a beer. The mixture is boiled to extract flavors and sterilize the wort. Once the boil is complete, the wort drains into a large vessel called a whirlpool. So you're going to whirlpool this in about 100 to 120 gallons a minute for about 10 minutes. And then you're going to shut it off. What that's going to do is that whirlpool is going to cause all that particulate to mound up in the middle of a big pile. Once in the whirlpool, the beer is stirred and denser solids are able to be separated out. Then the cooling process begins. The heat exchanger is a device that brings down the temperature of the wort and transfers the heat to other parts of the process. Because yeast is unable to grow at high temperatures, cooling the wort is important to provide the yeast a suitable environment. At that point, you're going to need to take this beer, which is still just under boiling, and you're going to need to cool it down to 65 degrees so that the yeast can work with it. And the yeast is already in the fermenter, so if you don't do that, you're going to immediately kill the yeast with the heat. After being pumped into the fermentation tank, yeast is pitched or added to the tank and fermentation begins. The amount of yeast added to the wort will be adjusted according to the desired taste and alcohol content of the beer. Once the yeast has been added, the beer sits for three to five days in order to ferment, sometimes more. As the yeast ferments, it produces alcohol and carbon dioxide. So what you're doing is you're building your own filter medium in here. And what there is is there's a series of mesh screens that run up and down through here. Yeah. After fermentation is complete, the tank now holds beer. Before the process is finished, the beer must be filtered. Filtering takes away many of the remaining solids and makes the color of the beer crisp and clean. Once filtration is completed, the beer is ready to be moved to the holding tank. You'll see beer come in there, it's coming out of the fermenter, it's going in, you see it being pulsed in there, it's going in here, and here you'll see clear beer. If you don't see clear beer there, you got a problem. <laughs> so then that goes out and it goes into the break tank. And that's how we get to that that's it. This tank, called a bright beer tank, is where the beer is stored after filtration. This is the intermediary place where the beer waits before being brought over to the production line. This beer is carbonated, with attention paid to the exact level of oxygen, in parts per billion per milliliter. Oxygen is one of the most detrimental factors to beer's taste and appearance. Once removed from the tank, the beer goes on to be packaged for distribution across New England. Freshly sanitized bottles and kegs are brought into the production line. Using carbon dioxide to expel the oxygen, beer is added to the containers. To ensure extra freshness, Wachusett drops a single drop of liquid nitrogen into the top of the bottles to dispel any remaining oxygen before capping the beers. This beer is now finished and the brew process is complete, ready for someone thirsty to crack it open and drink away. As the founders of Wachusett Brewery, WPI graduates themselves were told when they first started the company, if you build it, they will drink. And drink they have for 18 years.